New video of Corrine Brown leaving the federal courthouse after the biggest day yet in her federal corruption trial. Based on discussions we heard in the courtroom, it sounds like she could take the stand tomorrow. Just hours ago, the government's star witness testified before the jury, saying Brown knows a lot more than she's letting on. This is video of Ronnie Simmons, Brown's former chief of staff, walking into the courthouse to take the stand as part of his plea, part of that agreement with prosecutors. Simmons says his former boss, the now defeated congresswoman, was in complete control of where the money went when it came to the use of hundreds of thousands of bogus charity dollars for lavish parties, vacations, and more. Simmons also said he's been handing Brown blank checks since 1993, a year after she first won a seat in the House. Brown has pleaded not guilty, and her attorney has argued Simmons was the real mastermind and took advantage of the aging politician. We have multiple crews at the courthouse. First, we begin with Joy with what we're hearing about Brown possibly taking the stand as early as tomorrow. Joy? Mary, Tom, that is true. First, we're going to hear from prosecutors, their last three witnesses. That should happen for about an hour's worth of time in the morning. And then as Corrine Brown's attorney left court today, I asked him directly. I said, do you plan on still having Corrine Brown take the stand? He said, yes, she is going to take the stand. I said, will she be your first witness? He said, no, probably third or fourth witness. Now, there is a gag order on the case. I did, though, try to get a feel from Corrine Brown herself when she left the courtroom how she's feeling. How are you feeling? Are you feeling okay today? You just listened to one of your f closest friends say all those things about you. How are you feeling? Are you feeling okay today? You just listened to one of your f closest friends say all those things. All right, not sure if you were able to see it there, but when I asked her, I got a chance to ask her, were you sad? Are you angry? Are you upset? She looked at me and kind of went, <sighs> indicating she was saddened by the testimony, of course, not being able to say anything. Also, just before court let out, we did hear the first testimony that confirmed what the FBI was alleging, that Corrine Brown was involved in tax fraud. Number one, we heard from Nat Glover. He took the stand, former Jacksonville sheriff here in town. He is now president of Edward Waters College. Corrine Brown claimed on her taxes that she donated thousands to EWC. He testified that there is no record of any money coming from her to EWC. Other people from the college got on the stand to testify about furniture. Doreen, Corrine Brown claimed that she donated Donated. They said, yes, she donated furniture, but it wasn't during the time that she claimed it on her taxes. Finally, we did hear from Jacoby Pittman. She is head of the Clara White mission. Also, Corrine Brown saying on her taxes that she donated thousands of dollars. Jacoby Pittman testified on the stand saying she has no record from 2009 to 2014 of any money coming from Corrine Brown. And she made a point to say that she has an airtight system when it comes to keeping track of her money. Joining me now, Jim Pickett. He has been in the courtroom all day following this trial, even closer than I have. He is on the other side of the courthouse. Jim, you actually tried to talk to Ronnie Simmons, Corrine Brown's former chief of staff, the headliner of today's testimony. What did he say? I'm sure nothing. Well, yeah, he said nothing, but his attorney was talking to us as well, basically telling us that a lot of this was because of greed, both on Ronnie and both on the former congresswoman. Ronnie Simmons had plenty to say in court about Corrine Brown and how she was the mastermind of the operation, but he had nothing to say outside. Ronnie, what are your thoughts? But Simmons' attorney did have a lot to say about the case and why his client is now turning against Corrine Brown and why the two worked together to use the bogus charity, in Simmons' words, to steal the money. They had to be in cahoots in this. And right. well, did, did they talk you about it? That, uh, um, from the testimony that we gathered here today, you'll see that basically it was the way of doing business. They understood each other after so many years. They understood each other, and they understood that this is the way they could they could handle this. She raised the money. She had the power. She raised the money, and uh, and thus the. Um, she had the right to it. In court, Simmons says he knew it was over when the FBI came to him last year. He said he did what Brown said to do. She called the shots. He gave her blank checks and campaign funds and would also withdraw thousands and thousands of dollars from the one door account and put them in the congresswoman's account. He says Brown told him to do it. Everyone who worked around uh, Corinne Brown says she gives the orders, but she raises the money. So she raised the money. 
she's helped, she's responsible to those people that she raised the money from, and therefore, um, whatever she wants to spend the money on is appropriate. Brown's attorney had countered through all of this, basically saying that Ronnie Simmons was a liar, that he would lie to the FBI, that he also lied to him when he was his original attorney, saying that he didn't do anything, and then said that, yes, it was a time to, uh, to give it up. That's why he said he pled guilty. We're live from the federal courthouse. Jim Pickett, Channel 4, the local station. Joy? All right, Jim, thank you so much. Folks, stick around. In about 15 minutes, Lindsay Gardner is going to be joining me. She's been in the courtroom throughout the day today, listening in on the testimony. We're looking ahead. What does Kareem Brown's defense team have to do to really recover from so much damaging testimony from friends and people that used to work for her? We're going to talk about that coming up. For now, we are live outside the federal courthouse. Tom, Mary, back to you.